Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I want you to turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to read two verses before I, two passages of scripture before I begin. Isaiah chapter 40. And if you want to hold that place, you can hold your place in Psalms chapter 27. I'm going to go right over to that. Isaiah chapter 40, and we're going to go to verse, from verse 25 to verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 25 to 31, and we're going to flip over to Psalms chapter 27. If you dare say praise the Lord, praise I'm going to pray before I read. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word that you have bestowed upon your people. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for ministering this word to me first and then allowing me to deliver this message to your people. Father, may your anointing fill this place. May their, the ears of the hearers, Lord, be touched today. May their hearts receive, be open, and ready to receive that word. If there are any hearts of stone, may they become hearts of flesh today, according to your word. And if there be any hindrances that may try to come in this place or be in this place, may they be removed in Jesus' name. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God people said, Amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 25 to 31 reads like this. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. This is God talking. Mm -hmm. Lift up your eyes. Somebody say, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. And look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name because of his great power and mighty strength. Not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Somebody say, do you not know? Amen. Have you not heard? Somebody say, have you not heard? Amen. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Mm -hmm. Even youth grow tired and weary. Mm -hmm. And young men stumble and fall. Ain't that the truth? But those who hope in the Lord yes. or those who wait on the Lord yes. will renew their strength. Yes. They will soar on wings like eagles. Mm -hmm. They will run and not grow weary. Yes. They will walk and not faint. Now, if, we, if you can just turn over to Psalm chapter 27, verse 11. And I'm reading from verse 11 to verse 14. If you're there, say praise the Lord. It says, teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. Ain't that the truth? Mm -hmm. I remain confident of this. I will see. Somebody say, I will see. I will see, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Wait for the Lord. Or wait on the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And wait for the Lord. Mm -hmm. The title of my message today is Wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple message today. Wait on the Lord. But it's such a tough thing to do, amen, when you're waiting on something very important. Mm -hmm. And you think that you don't really have time to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, do I have some witnesses in mm -hmm. this church today? Mm -hmm. I, waiting on the Lord seems like such an easy thing to say, but actually doing it is something else. And I, I've been, you know, dealing with this, and God's been speaking this to me about waiting on the Lord. Because I believe when you wait on the Lord, you will get the best. Yeah. Oh, come on now. The time that I did not wait on the Lord, I got something. But see, I realize I don't want something. Oh, come on now. I don't just want something. Come on now. I know I got some witnesses in this house. I don't just 
want something. I want what God has for me. Because I know it's going to be the best. Amen. I know what God has for me. No one can take away from me. But I got to wait on the Lord. Of all the principles that I've learned in scripture, I believe that this one stands out to me the most. The concept of waiting on the Lord. Turn to your neighbor and say, wait on the Lord. This is a critical issue because God because God's will includes his timing. Yeah. So we always think about the will of God, but what about the timing of God? Yeah. We always say, I want to be in your will, Lord, but to be in his will means to be in his timing. Uh -huh. Oh, come on. Do I have some witnesses yeah, yeah. in this church today? His timing is a part of his will. He has an awesome plan mapped out for each of us, mm -hmm. but he only reveals that plan one step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. He has to plan. Mm -hmm. Somebody say he has to plan. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know, I know, mm -hmm. come on now, I know. Mm -hmm. It's not your cousin knows, mm -hmm. your wife know, your husband know, your mother and father them know. It's not the person on your friend on your job know. Mm -hmm. It's not Dr. Phil know. It's yeah. I, know. I know. Oh, come on now. Come on. And see, we have a problem with just going to one source for our help. Yeah, oh, come yeah. on now. Yeah. We, we, especially when you got to wait. Uh -huh. We like to poll everybody, like get a, get a group decision. Now, let me ask everybody and see what everybody got to say. But everybody don't know. All right. All right. The word says, I know the plan. See, and, and the thing is, we got to wait to know what that plan is. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Now, you can go get a plan from somebody. Now, you can ask your cousin and them. You can ask your brother, but they don't have the plan that God has for you. Yeah, yeah, come oh, come on. on now. And I've done that. I've asked people, and people have told me stuff, and i followed their word. And I've got myself messed up. And we look through the Bible, you can see when people did not listen to the word of the Lord, they got themselves messed up. Yeah. We heard it this morning in Sunday school. This man listened to his wife, and he got himself messed up. Uh -huh. I'm not telling y'all not to listen to your wife now. I don't, want, I don't want the women to crucify me in here. I'm just saying, you need to listen to the Lord. If your wife is speaking what thus says the Lord, then listen to her. Oh, come on now. Y'all better hear me today. I know. That's what we have to, and, and, and we have to get that understanding. When we follow his plan, he is glorified. And we are fulfilled. Is that all right for somebody here today? However, if we don't seek the Lord's guidance each day, we'll end up following our own course. And we don't want to follow our own, record, our own course. As a result, we'll be confused and dissatisfied. You ever been confused and dissatisfied? I know I have been. Every time I followed my own word or somebody else's word that wasn't God, who didn't know the plan for my life, I was confused and dissatisfied. And then we end up missing out on the thing that God has for us. The wisest thing you can do Every day is to start by connecting with the Almighty God. Mm. That's the wisest thing you can do every morning, saying, Lord, what is your plan for me today? Lord, guide my footsteps today. Because the enemy would love for you to take your eyes off of God. Just in a split second, he can turn you on the wrong path. Yeah. I've been there. Amen. Don't make sure every day the wisest thing you can do is wake up and connect with the Lord. Although we are already united to the Father through Jesus Christ, we still need that daily communication, that daily prayer, that daily commu open communication, that intimate relationship with the Lord. Instead of only coming to him in times of emergency or need or, Lord, I need, I need, I need. No, speak to him on a daily basis. Just you know, start out by giving him worship and praise and just thanking him for waking you up in the morning. Is that all right with somebody in here today? Amen. Protecting you when you had your eyes closed throughout the whole night. Thanking God that he kept his eyes on you. Amen. We should begin each morning by asking him to help us make wise decisions. To walk wisely. Not lagging behind his plan or moving ahead of his plan, but going along with his plan for our life. Amen. Is that all right for somebody here today? So the question is, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? And when I think about waiting on the Lord, I look at two people that had to wait on the Lord. I look at Abraham, who was a man that 
uh, was called a friend of God. And Abraham, and when you look, and that's what we're studying now in Sunday school, when you look through Genesis 12, 17, you see that in chapter 12, he got a promise. And you know what? He had to wait. Oh, come on now, church. He had to wait. And, you, and the, the, he had to wait. When, I, when you look at this, he had to wait 15 years for the promise to come. How deep is that? He had to wait 15 years. And I thought about that. I said, wow, he was 75 years old. Now, 15 years on top of 15 years is okay. When you add that 15 on top of 75, that's a whole different story. Well, y'all not hearing me today. When you think about it, when that, it, between that 15 and that 75 years, those are some rugged years in your aging process. Uh -huh. Oh, come on now. Your back don't act the same way it used to anymore. Yes. Your feet don't act the same way. And you think about it. Now, I'm going to have me a little baby, and I was ready to have a baby at 75. But now you're adding 15 years onto this. I don't know about this situation. Uh -huh. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying here? He had to wait 15 years for the promise to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. David, who was a man after God's own heart, he had to wait mm -hmm. on the Lord. <laughs> he had to wait. Amen. It was 14 years before the promise of him becoming king. Mm -hmm. 14 years he had to wait. And what I thought about is, you know, God's promise is sure. But the timing is unknown. Uh -huh. Oh, come on now. Y'all need to hear me. It was unknown to Abraham. It was unknown to David. And it's unknown to us. They had to wait. Somebody said, you got to wait. Oh, come on now. You have to, they had to wait. And, and I think about, when I thought about the waiting, much of David's waiting and was time that he spent running from King Saul. He was on the run during his waiting period. Now, that's a tough thing to do, amen, when God gives you a promise, but you're on the run. Think about 15 years and 14 years, they had to wait. Somebody said, you have to wait. You have to wait. And all the while, Saul was trying to kill him. But let me tell you something. No one can kill the plan of God. All right. Oh, come on, church. Nobody can kill the plan of God. When God's plan, when he promises something, it will come to pass. Amen. And what I thought about is, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? I thought about this first point. God uses delays to prepare us for his plans. David learned valuable lessons, lessons during those difficult years that equipped him to be king. Let me tell you something. When you go through something, you got to learn something. That's right. Oh, come on, church. I've learned so much when I've gone through things, amen, that prepared me for what God has for me. Mm -hmm. See, if I would have never gone through those things, I would have never been prepared for what he had for me. Yes, David learned a lot of lessons when he went through those things. Mm -hmm. In the same way God uses our hurts and our losses and our disappointments to build up character inside of us. Yes. Don't worry about going through. Go through. God built a character in you. All right, you had a setback. God set you up for your comeback. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come on now. He's yeah. making you stronger than you've ever been before. That's what character, it builds up strength in you when you go through. If you got to wait a little bit, keep on waiting. It produces character and the qualities that we need to accomplish God's plan for our lives. He uses delays to prepare us. This is your preparation period. Amen. Is that all right for somebody? Amen. So number two, waiting on God is an active stillness. And what I mean by that is that it doesn't mean that you come to an abrupt stop and just stop what you're doing. You just freeze up. Pastor Monty, what you doing? I'm waiting on the Lord. Don't touch me. I'm waiting on the Lord. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you're still moving and doing things for God, but you're not moving ahead of God's plan. You are listening. Amen. It doesn't mean stop what you're doing. Keep serving the Lord. Keep doing the things that God's telling you to do, but you're not moving ahead of his word. Amen. It's not. It's an active stillness. It's doing the things that God is telling you to do while you're waiting on him. It doesn't mean you stop all activity and do nothing. When the Lord is bringing about change in your life, he wants us to continue being productive while we're waiting and waiting on further instruction. We're taking step by step, faith by faith. God is telling us, keep on going. This is what I want you to do. Then when you get there, now I want you to do this. We're taking step by step with the Lord. 
That's what it is. Waiting on God is an active stillness. It's not just standing still. It's moving, but you're moving according to the word of God. Yeah. The next point is, waiting on God is a purposeful. Waiting on God is purposeful. We often think that the Lord's plan for our life is on the other side of the delay. But his eyes are watching us during the process. Oh, come on now. It's during the process that we are really fulfilling God's plan for our life. It's the process. We can't wait for the process. That's why we end up leaning to our own understanding. But it's the, the process is the essential part of his purpose. Knowing that, knowing that uh, God has something on the other side gives us a sense of direction and expectancy. I'm waiting on the Lord. I expect breakthrough. Oh, come on now. Come on. When you're in expectation of the Lord, that keeps you walking by faith. When you know there's something on the other side, you're going to keep walking towards it. Oh, come on now. When you know that there's a breakthrough, that God has something ahead of you, you're going to keep walking towards it. That's that expectancy on the Lord. You have a, 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 an expectancy and a direction that takes you to the place that God wants you to be. Waiting on God is perfect. I'm not just waiting, just hoping and praying. Maybe one day I am in expectation of what God is getting ready to do. I expect Victory Fellowship to be out of debt. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah. I expect Victory Fellowship to be above and not beneath. Yeah. So I'm walking by faith to that destination. Yeah. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying today? Yeah. You have to have purpose while you're waiting on the Lord. Amen. That's good. Number four. God knows when we're willing to accept his answers. He knows, he knows when we're willing to surrender. He knows it. You may say it, but he knows exactly when you're ready. Oh, come on now. We may say, Lord, I, it's your will, not my will, but your will, but we're still holding on to things that God is telling us to let go of. Uh -huh. Oh, come on, church. He knows exactly when you're ready to let go. When you let go of everything and say, Lord, now I'm ready for your plan. When you decided, it's not my will, not my plan, but your plan. I'm not going to ask everybody else. I'm going to go to you because you know. Somebody say, he knows. He knows. God knows when we're willing to accept his answers. If we'll listen, he'll reveal the next step when we're ready. He's not going to give you something you ain't ready for. Lord, I want a million dollars. You ain't ready for it. Lord, I want a brand new car. You ain't taking care of the one you got. Well, y'all not hearing me today. Come on, he knows when you're ready. So each step, he prepares you for each step. So we want to run 10 steps ahead of God when we're not even ready. If you got, if, if you ask for a million dollars and you ain't ready, that million dollars will kill you. Y'all yeah. hear what I'm saying? Yeah. It'll take you out. But see, God knows when you're ready to receive that breakthrough. He'll take you step by step. And if he delays, we must recognize that it's his timing. Yeah. And his timing is perfect. Yeah. And the best doesn't always come quickly. Right. Come on now. Yeah. The best sometimes takes a little time to prepare. Yeah. Just like a good meal takes some time to prepare. Uh -huh. Oh, come on now. If you rush in a meal, when you rush a meal, you're going to have some raw food. <laughs> oh, come on now. If you rush chicken, you're going to get salmonella. <laughs> y'all hear what I'm saying today? Chicken takes some time to cook. And even though you got some hungry people waiting, just like I have hungry daughters and a hungry wife wait, my cooking takes some time. <laughs> but when it's done, it's right. Okay. Is that all right with somebody here today? I'm not tooting my horn, but I learned from the best, you know? So cooking takes time. When I was a kid, I was like, I want to dinner now, but you got to wait for it. Wait for it. Somebody said, wait for it. But when you wait for it, that's when you can enjoy it, amen? You ain't worried about getting sick after you eat it, amen? Oh, come on now. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? Amen. God knows when you're willing to accept his answers, and his timing is perfect. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We are always told in Scripture to wait on the Lord. Scripture is constantly telling us to wait on the Lord. If you are, if you're hearing the word rush, that's not the Lord. That's right. You gotta hear me that. If 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 the word is do it now and don't wait, that is not the Lord. There is nowhere in the Bible that it tells you don't wait. That it tells you rush and do something. There is nowhere in the Bible that it tells you make a hasty decision without consulting the Lord. So if anybody's rushing you, it is the enemy. And the enemy's trying to get you into something that you're not supposed to be into. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. 
Yeah. Oh, come on now. When you get to know the Lord and know the word, you know that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Yeah. You hear this still, small voice. Yeah. That's what the word says. He asks in a still, small voice, go this way. Yeah. Go that way. Yeah. Don't do He's not going to have a bullhorn yelling at you. That's not how God is. Yeah. So we must, amen, walk according to that. We must walk according to that. It is waiting. We read in the word about waiting on the Lord. Yeah. Psalms chapter 25, verse 1. It says, in you, Lord, my God, I put my trust. Mm -hmm. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, yeah. nor let my enemies triumph over me. And I love verse 3. It says, no one, say no one, no one. who hopes in you will ever, somebody say ever, ever. be put to shame. Yeah. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. So no one who waits on the Lord will be put to shame. Come on now, don't let somebody tell you that your waiting is weakness, amen. Your waiting is strength. Come on now, there's power in waiting on the Lord. Oh, come on now, anyone who waits on the Lord will never be put to shame. There's shame when you lean to your own understanding. There's shame when you do your own thing outside of the will of God. But the word of God said, no one well, who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then we have Psalms chapter 37, verse 1. It says, do not fret. And see, we have this tendency of fretting. Mm -hmm. And I hear this word so many times in the Bible, do not fret. Mm -hmm. Fret mm -hmm. not. Don't fret. And we have this kind of tendency to fret. Every time the enemy pops up, we fret. Mm -hmm. Or someone speaks something bad about us, even though it's not be it may not be true, we just take it to heart. We start to fret. Mm -hmm. But the word of God says, fret not. Do not fret of those who are doing evil. Mm -hmm. Or be envious of those who are doing wrong. And that's why we have a tendency to say that, well, the wrongdoers are succeeding. Mm -hmm. Come on now, they're not succeeding. Yes, right. Come on now. The, the, you know that whatever they're doing, if they're doing it wrong, it's going to come to an end. Yes, right. yes. But I love this in verse 9. Be still. Somebody say, be still. Yes, be still. We have a tendency to stop being still. I know as a kid, I couldn't be still. Mm -hmm. My mother should always be like, get somewhere and sit down. My dad especially, get somewhere and sit down. <laughs> you're ripping and running, you're running from the living room to the downstairs, back up again, get somewhere and sit down. And we have a tendency as Christians not to be able to sit down, not to be still, but to be always trying to do something. God is saying, be still. God is working things out. You don't have to work it out. You ain't got to try to figure it out, try to put your hands on it. We always got to put our hands on stuff and just mess things up. And what we put our hands on always turns into a mess. But what is God telling us? Be still. Somebody say, be still. Turn to your neighbor and say, be still. Yeah. Tell them, I know you want to get up, but be still. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Be still before the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Patience. I hear that word, patience. Wait patiently to get the best. Amen? Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger. Turn from wrath. Do not fret. That's that word again. Do not fret. Turn to your neighbor and say, do not fret. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. Mm -hmm. For those who are evil will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But those who hope in the Lord, come on church, yeah. will inherit the land. I'm ready to inherit your land. Yeah. I'm waiting on the Lord. When you wait, that means there's an inheritance. Yeah. Oh, come on now. And then I love this, amen, in verse 34. It says, hope in the Lord. Uh -huh. Or oh, wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. When you're waiting, you're hoping. You got a, 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 a supernatural hope. You're waiting and believing by faith that what God has said is going to come to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, hope or wait in the Lord and keep his way. We got to keep his way. Mm -hmm. Not our way, his way. Somebody say his way. Mm -hmm. He will exalt you to inherit the land. Mm -hmm. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. Mm -hmm. You will see it. Somebody say, you will see it. You will see it. You, will see it. you ain't got to worry about it. You're just going to see it. You ain't got to talk about it. You will see it. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You will see it. But you got to wait on the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 40, verse 1. It says, I waited, what? Patiently for the Lord. And then it says, he turned to me and what? 
heard my cry. There is a period where God's going to turn to you. If, if everybody turned their back on you, God's going to turn to you. Oh, well, I'm not talking to somebody here. You may have lost friends, you may have lost loved ones, but at that moment when God turns to you, that's when favor comes. Oh, that's when the breakthrough comes. Come on now. He hears your cry. He hears when you call out to him. He says, I waited, but you got to wait patiently for that. And it says, he turned to me and heard my cry. But you got to what? Wait on the Lord. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Isaiah 64, verse 4. It says, since ancient times, no one has heard. No ear has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you. There's nobody like Jesus. Yes, there is no God like Jehovah Jireh. Do I have some witnesses in the church? They, they, they try to come up with so many substitutes nowadays. They, they want to make this a God and that a God. They want to say, well, this is not the only way. No, there is no God like Jehovah. Come on now, only one way. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the only God I serve. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying today? There is no God. No eye has ever seen. They got, like, like the word said, they got gods with ears that can't hear. They got eyes and they can't see. But we serve the one true God, Jehovah Jireh, who is our provider. The word said, you have never seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who what? Wait for him. Come on now, you got to wait. Somebody said you got to wait. He acts on your behalf, but you got to wait. If you doing things, then God's not going to do something. But if you let go, that's when God's ready to do his thing. Oh, yeah, I hear you. That. When it's, it's, somebody says it's time to let go. Because those who wait for him, God is acting on your behalf. Even if you don't see it, he's acting on your behalf. Oh, that's especially when God is acting on your behalf. Especially when you can't see it. When things seem like it's a lost cause, God is working behind the scenes. Oh, come on now. I need somebody with faith to see God working behind the scenes. When this person that you're praying for seems like they're getting worse. Seems like they're making bad decision after bad decision. They get worse and worse. You say, Lord, I want this person saved. I want them into your kingdom. But you have no idea what God is doing behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh, come on now. You got to hold back your confession of faith. Keep pleading the blood. Keep praying over that person. And God is acting on your behalf. Hallelujah. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. And so my next question is, why does God require that we wait? Why do we have to wait? And here are reasons for uh, uh, waiting on the Lord. Number one, we wait because we want to receive his clear direction. Hmm. Not knowing the future may sometimes become impatient for us. We become impatient when we don't know the future. Thinking that we'll lose out on something good. The enemy always tell you you're losing out. Because his biggest thing, the first thing he told Eve, you're losing out. Come on, God didn't give you everything. He held something back. And that's what not waiting on the Lord or listening to the voice of the Lord will get you messed up with some messed up direction. But I want clear direction. I want the Lord to tell me exactly what I need to do. Oh, come on now. That's why you wait. When you wait, you get the full and clear direction. And I love that. You know what? And, and, and the enemy will always say, act now. If you don't act now, you're going to miss out. But God, what, what God has planned for us already has our names written on it. Mm -hmm. well, we have some witnesses in this church that he's already got your name written on it. The word says he prepares a table before you what? In the presence of your enemy. Your name is on that seat. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Can't nobody take your name off that seat when God wrote your name on it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There is no way we can lose anything if we follow God. He has given us his word and his spirit to teach us and to guide us. Mm -hmm. By heeding to his instruction, we are conformed to the image of Christ and we're empowered to walk obediently according to his will and according to his schedule. Mm -hmm. Do I have some witnesses in this church today? We are walking according to his will and his schedule. So we want to receive clear direction. To keep in step with his timing. We have a tendency to want to go too fast or go too slow. You know, when I walk with my wife, she's always like, you're walking 20 steps ahead of me. 
And that's just, I got it natural for my dad. We just walk fast. That's just something we do. And sometimes I got to slow down. I got to walk with my wife. I can't look like I'm 50 feet ahead and everybody else is behind me. And that's what we do spiritually. We try to go ahead of God. And every time we go ahead of God, we always get messed up. So it's time to slow down and keep and step with his timing. The Lord is never in a hurry. Right. The Lord is never in a hurry. Right. You never hear in the scripture where God was rushing somebody. Right. You never hear him pushing somebody out the door. <coughs> he was never in a hurry. Somebody say, God is never in a rush. Right. He's never in a rush. Right. He's never in a hurry. Right. He created time. Right. So why, did he, why does God need to rush if he created time? Right. Oh, I need somebody to get a hold of that kind. If he created time, why does he have to rush in between? A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Mm -hmm. Oh, if we just get a hold of that concept, why are we rushing when God controls time? Oh, we just need to walk with him. We just need to talk with him. He'll guide us. He knows the perfect time for everything. Oh, I need somebody to hear me today. Hallelujah. He created time and everything in between. So all we need to do is walk according to his timing and his will. How awesome is that? Glory to God. Even when we ask according, and, and I love this, amen, that even when we ask things according to his will, he gives us confirmation in our spirit. We might not get it right away, but he gives us those subtle confirmation that it's on the way. That it's on, keep on waiting. Oh, keep on waiting. There's a little breakthrough here. Keep on waiting. I, 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 this is a testing of your faith. Keep on walking. I know it looks like you shouldn't walk, but keep on walking. Oh, come on now. If it's you, Lord, bid me to come. Come on. Get out the boat. Walk on that thing you ain't never walked on before. Oh, come on now, church. Hallelujah. He gives us the confirmation in our spirit that it's, it's about to happen. What, what, what we can't presume is when exactly it will happen. Sometimes he holds it back because we aren't ready to receive it yet. You're not ready for it. Somebody say you're not ready. When you're not ready, God's not going to give it to you. But he's preparing you for it. Amen. We always forget about the preparation period or the process. Don't give up on the process. Let the process take its course. Amen. That the, when we wait on the Lord, God has our best. Amen. He has his best waiting for us. But sometimes there's a process. Wait on the Lord. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. That's when we must trust that his way and his timing is the best. He, to test our faith. Number three is to test our faith. We already have all the blessings that God has promised us. But sometimes he restrains them until we trust him. Oh, come on now, church. He wants us to believe in him when we can't clearly see the details of everything that's going on. He wants us to believe it when we don't see it. People say seeing is believing. No, believing is seeing. That's what God, when you believe it and stand on faith, amen, that's when things happen. Abraham believed, and that's why I said it was accounted to him for righteousness. He believed when he didn't see anything. He was a stranger. Out when he couldn't see any land, God promised him land. He promised his descendants would molt would be. You couldn't even know it's more than the sand of the sea. Sand of the beach. You how much? How many grains of sand are on the beach? He said that's how your descendants are. He didn't have one child. He didn't have one descendant yet. But he believed, and God accounted it to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. It's to strengthen us. It's to it's to test our faith. Amen. Test our faith and to strengthen our faith. Waiting teaches us to walk by faith and not by sight. Trusting God's timing instead of giving into immediate self-gratification. We always want it right now. But now may not be God's timing. Oh, come on now. Now may not be the right time. So wait on the Lord. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. It's to build up. It's to test our faith. And we hear this all the time. Faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. You, your faith needs to be tested so it can get stronger and stronger. So whatever attack the enemy brings against you, you can stand. Mm -hmm. Testing of our faith. Number five. To sift the motives of our desires. Sometimes we pray selfishly or we have pride 
only to discover how foolish our requests are. God's delay in answering our prayers gives us time to see the situation from his viewpoint. We get to see what's really going on. So how should we wait is the question. How should we wait for the Lord? And here is what we should be doing while we're waiting. The Lord wants us to benefit from our time waiting and responding correctly. Instead of becoming impatient, nervous, frustrated, or miserable, we should follow these next examples of how we should wait. The first one is we should wait patiently. Psalms 37 verse 7 says, rest in the Lord and what? Wait patiently for him. Rest means you don't have to worry about what God is doing. Just believe what he's doing is going to work for your good. Do I have some witnesses in this church? So we need to wait patiently for the Lord. Next is quietly. Because I think sometimes we can talk ourselves out of our blessing. Mm. I believe that's why Zechariah uh, got quiet and he, he took his, God took his speech away until John was born because I believe he was going to talk himself out of his blessing. Mm. And we can talk ourselves out, especially when we got to wait sometimes. Sometimes we say, it ain't never going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If you speak it, it's going to come to pass. It ain't, I'm never going to get this job. I'm never going to get this promotion. I'm never going to get the money that I need to do the things that I need to do. And you keep speaking that, but we sometimes we just need to wait quietly before the Lord. Let God speak to us. And, and I love this in Psalm 62, verse 1. It says, my soul waits in silence for God only. That's the only person I'm waiting on, is God to, to show himself strong on my behalf. I'm waiting patiently for God only. That's, a, that's the only plan that will benefit your life. Yeah. Quietly. So we got patiently and quietly. Trustingly. Psalms 37, verse 7. Do not fret, the word says. Do not fret. Don't fret when people succeed. Don't fret. Wait patiently for the Lord. Trustingly. We trust the Lord when I can't even see you. That's tr true trust right there. Mm -hmm. Number four, expectantly. We are waiting expectantly on the Lord. Psalm 27, verse 13 says, I would have despair unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have gave up if I didn't taste and see that the Lord was good. Oh, come on now. I, I would have given up if I didn't know that I served an awesome God. I would have given up if I didn't realize I had a testimony of God bringing me out years ago and bringing me to this point where I am now. Oh, come on. The word says, taste and see that the Lord is good. I would have given up if I wouldn't have realized how good God is. If I would have forgot the word of God it says God will see my every need and he'll meet my every need according to his riches and glory. Oh, come on now. I would have given up if I wouldn't have seen the word that said you're going to be the head and not the tail. Amen. Oh, yeah, not here. I would have given up if I wouldn't have seen the word that said you're going to be above and not beneath. Amen. I would have given up, David said, but I know I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I've seen his goodness, and God said, I'm taking you into greater. He says, I got greater for you. Oh, come on now. I would have given up if I would have forgotten the word of truth. Amen. I would have given up if I didn't put on the whole armor of God. I would have given up, amen, if I didn't believe that God is working something out in me. He's working something out in Victory Fellowship. Yeah. I would have given up if I didn't see his goodness on my children. Yeah. If I didn't see his goodness on my family. Yeah. If I didn't see him time and time again show himself strong on my behalf. Yeah. Show, make a way out of no way. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah. I would have given up if I didn't see the goodness of the Lord when I look back over my life. Yeah. When I look yeah. back at where I came from and, and where I went and now where I am, I would have given up. Yeah. But thank God I didn't give up. Thank God I'm not giving up because I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Somebody said, wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Expectantly. I expect good things. I expect the breakthrough to happen. That's my faith. Amen. I don't see it, but I expect it. I expect to be above and not beneath. I expect this to be a lighthouse in the community of Union County. Oh, come on now. I expect us to be out of debt, to be lenders and not borrowers, because that's the word of God. So I'm going to wait expectantly. Somebody said, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. 
steadfast and courageously. I'm not letting my spirit get down. Oh, come on now. Even if I got to keep on waiting, keep on waiting. And, and the word of God says in Psalm 27, 14, wait for the Lord and what? Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Take courage in the fact that the same God, come on, somebody say the same God. The same God that brought you out in 97 is the same God in 2018. I want y'all to understand. The same God that put a ram in the bush for Abraham is the same God today. Somebody say the same God. And let your heart take courage. So while you're waiting, don't be discouraged. Amen. Be encouraged that the longer you wait, there's going to be a greater breakthrough. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Yeah. The longer I wait, I'm walking into something great. I know, God, this long period is a preparation period. I'm getting myself ready to be able to handle what you're about to give me. Yeah. Oh, come on, church. Oh, how steadfastly and courageously. And then lastly. Standing on the word of God. That's the only thing you can stand on. When you can't stand on anything, you better stand on the word of God. Don't stand on religion. Religion is sinking sand. It's the man who built his house on the sand. That is religion. If you got religion, throw it out. But when you got a relationship, you are standing on the rock. Psalms 130 verse 5 said, I wait for the Lord. And in his word, and in his word, I put my hope. There is nothing else that I put my hope in but the word of God. The word of God is true. The word of God is powerful. He said, I put my hope in the word. I'm waiting, and while I'm waiting, I'm looking in the word. And what the word is telling me that my situation is getting ready to change. Well, I have some witnesses in this church today. The, the word is telling me if I keep on trusting, God is working and acting on my behalf. Oh, do I have some witnesses in this house today? Waiting, we're standing on the word. Make sure while you're waiting, you're waiting patiently, quietly, trustingly, expectantly, steadfast and courageously, and standing on the word that will not fail. Amen. And closing, we must trust God even when his answer is wait. Somebody say, wait on the Lord. Wait Stand up and give God some praise. Praise God. Stand up and give God some worship. Somebody said, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Somebody said, wait for something. I'm going to tell you, keep on waiting. Somebody.